Um, <clears throat> this last poem, I was raised in the church and uh, was taught that I needed to try and be more perfect. Uh, and um, I had a, hard, a real hard time with that, um, especially in the fifth grade uh, when I got my ass kicked by a fourth grader. <laughs> and um, and I, I traced it back and said, you know, I think something happened to me then. And not just that it jacked up my face a little bit. I've, I feel like something happened inside my head about my concepts of perfection. And uh, I'd love to share this with you. This is called The Victory Explosions. Thank you all for listening. <clears throat> I try to remember my youth. It evaporates into just a handful of memories. One memory was that you believed the entire earth was made perfect by God and that humans came and fouled it up. And as God looked down, shaking his head, saying, how could they choose terror and loss when I've offered them perfection? And then you got older and didn't feel that way. And you thought maybe God never really wanted perfection if he designed the things he made with an instinct to screw up. Fighting and failing became beautiful, hard. Screwing up became part of the program. You can call it sin. You can call it human. But maybe there are codes built inside of darkness needing light and vice versa. It did not shake your belief in the existence of a God, but it shook your belief in the bland necessity for perfection. It birthed the belief that the human who could figure out a balance, a hunger for winning, and a deep respect and comfort for losing would win the life trophy. And now you go back to the first year you learned to daydream in a clothing rack, the first year butterflies bloomed adrenalized in your wet guts. In the fifth grade, you tempted everything. All bicycles spinning, all pencils at war, all radios dismantled, the smell of girls. Launching off the swing set for your first sensation of flight, an innocent season for getting your ass royally kicked by a boy who had fallen in love with the same girl as you. Adam White heard I had kissed this girl underwater at her Dutch pool party, French style, which is weird for a fifth grader. These were skill sets I did not possess in the fifth grade. I didn't know who started the rumor, but I was about to pay for it with the cash of my face. The same field we once chased girls together and the strong freckled Adam challenged me to my first fist fight. I felt like a coward in the costume of a coward. I was skinnier than a dead model. No matter how much I denied the rumor, freckles popping from his face like braille, he said, your ass is grass, Derek Brown. I said, I know, I know. The crowd gathered. I stared at them like a sparrow trapped in an airport terminal, wanting the sky but stuck against the glass. I stood like a cricket in a junkyard of fiddles, unable to stop my legs from shaking music from my knees. He swore he loved her and that I would pay. And where in the hell were the teachers? What I wanted was mercy, but I didn't know what that word meant. And his fist came out and crushed at my jaw. My eyes went black. All that I saw was a shower of lightning bugs children flashing into sunshine, my own teeth penetrating my cheek, falling backwards, blood fertilizing the softball field. But instead of freezing, for some reason, for some dumb reason, I stood up again. And guess what? He struck me down once more. Eyes ricocheting against the back of my skull, the earth meeting my failure, legs buckling, skin reeking with contact. And for some dumb reason, I stood up again. And guess what? Yes, he sucked me with all his might. Matchsticks lighting in my cheeks, but I stood up again. And yes, 
He hit me so hard, my mother's eyes bled, and I fell again, but stood up again, and I can, 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 until he grew tired of socking me, and he left, and everybody left, and I said, yes, yes. I now knew the cost of the satin sponge, alone baptized in my own warm blood. I now knew the cost of a girl's satin lips. Because guess what? We did kiss underwater. <laughs> like fucking aqua spies. <laughs> but it was worth it. There is nothing for me to learn from winning. It is losing that has yielded all the unforgettable lessons. Losing is pregnant with chance. Victory escorts loss to every dance. That is harmony, harmony, harmony. Thank you all so much. Anis Mosgani, how do you